Now, pheromones are very, very special molecules. These are molecules that are released by one individual, okay, and then they're, they're picked up by another individual, and the other individual who picks them up becomes excited. These, these are, in fact, the pheromone sex. This is the female when she's actually calling. She's trying to get her mate, all right? And she protrudes the bottom of her abdomen out and pushes out these pheromone sacs. And out of the pheromone sacs comes a molecule, which we know as bombicol, this beautiful chemical molecule, nice long chain of carbon atoms, lots of hydrogen sprinkled all over it. And then it's got a little oxygen-hydrogen at the top. That's what we call an alcohol group. Beautiful, beautiful molecule. And this molecule is there to attract a mate. Okay? It's there to attract the male. And amazingly, a male silk moth can detect this molecule over two and a half kilometres away. Imagine that. You're sort of sat in the centre of Dublin here, and there's some trucker down by the port. Okay? And he can smell you girls, and he likes it. And he's coming for you. And he'll see you later. Right. And this is amazing. And how can he do this? How can he do this? This, this is our male silk moth. Look at these. Does any, can anybody guess what those are? Eyes, ears, eyelashes, no. Okay. These are his antennae. Okay. These are his antennae. And they're totally tuned into this molecule. And these are some of the most sensitive sensors that we know about. We cannot make chemical instrumentation as sensitive as these receptors on this moth's antenna. Absolutely amazing what you can do. And actually, to show you how amazing these things are, I'll give you another little comparison. This is the gypsy moth, and she's, um, she's a big pest in the United States, so lots of people that do work on her. And um, she produces a, a pheromone. This is the pheromone, another nice long chain of carbon atoms, which has got a three-membered ring with an oxygen in the middle. That's what we know as an epoxide. Anybody who's into glue might have heard of epoxy resins. That's where they get their names from. Okay, so this is an epoxide. And she produces this. Now, what I want to do is give you a comparison, okay, with a female, okay? There we go, there she is. She's Brittany. All oh, hail Brittany. <laughs> Brittany. Okay, the goddess of love. And let's see how much pheromone the moth produces and for how long. So the moth only weighs a gram. And she only lives for about four months, whereas, oh, look at her, Brittany, she should last 80 years, but she really doesn't mess up big time soon. And probably after a good meal, she weighs about 50 kilograms. So how much pheromone are we producing here? Now, the moth only produces 0.0039 grams of pheromone, and amazingly, for only 30 minutes of her lifetime. Now, this quantity, 0.0039 grams, that's less than one milligram. That's a quantity that you can't see with your naked eyes. It's a teeny, teeny, tiny amount, all right? So she's just producing a tiny amount. But let's see, if it was sort of translated into a pheromone for a woman, let's see how much pheromone this woman would get. Well, she would get a 20 gram bottle of perfume and just five days in which to use it. Imagine that, lady. Just five days to find the love of your life. And you don't even have a whole bottle of perfume. You only have about one-fifth of a bottle. What this tells you about pheromones is these are not just like nice smells that you can buy from boots. No, no. When a bloke senses a pheromone, it drives him absolutely wild. I mean, he's just gagging for it. Okay? So... Let's see how gagging for it a bloke can go. And there you go. Here is a bloke gypsy moth. And what we're going to do is we're going to puff it with a tiny, tiny amount of the pheromone and see what the reaction is. Here goes. Let's have a go. <laughs> Full Monty. I mean, this is one seriously exciting moth because if he finds that pheromone and flies up the older flu, he'll find the female moth. There will be some moth loving. 
okay? And then there'll be some baby moths. And of course, that is the most important thing for him in his life, that he passes on his genes to the next generation. And isn't this fantastic? And as it's science week, I need to talk to you about the appliance of science as well. So here's some appliance of science. We can, if we've got a pest species of moth, we can set up a trap like this. And we set up this trap, and all the moths around all come flying around because we place a tiny amount of the pheromone inside. And all the male moths think this is just like a harem <laughs> stuffed full of women. And they're not stupid, okay? And they all come flying in. And then, because we're very cunning scientists, what we do is we put a really, really sticky piece of paper on the bottom. And they stick to the piece of paper. And they die. <laughs> That's right. And it's, it is right to laugh, actually, because this is a wonderful, wonderful way to die. This is the Benny Hill way to die. What you have to realise is that most of these guys... Most of these guys are virgin males. And they're lying there, surrounded by all this pheromone, thinking that they're making love. So these guys die with a great big smile on their face, having the time of their lives. It's just, it is just a wonderful way to go. So we've seen how powerful pheromones can be for moths. So could pheromones be really powerful for us? Well... There's been lots and lots of experiments done on this, and we know some things and we don't know other things. The problem with trying to do experiments on human beings is that you have to get over this barrier of learning. That said, difficult to do experiments as it is, let's have a look at two putative pheromones that we believe are in humans. And the pheromone system in humans is different to that which you find in moths. It's not the females that produce the pheromones, it's the males. And if you're wondering where we produce pheromones, they're in those sweaty parts of us. So underneath our arms and in our groin. Okay? And if you analyse this area, you find that in males you have two molecules, one called andostanol, and the other one called andostenone. And these are steroid-type molecules, much like the estrogen and testosterone that's inside you already. And these, we believe, are pheromones. And they're there to attract females to males. So we could use these pheromones, if you, if you have to resort to chemical means, and it's slightly on the hand, but well, so what? Okay, um, then pheromones is where you need to go. But don't buy them off the back of newspapers. Only, only ever buy them from the vet. That's when you can get the real stuff. <laughs> so there we go. We've seen a little bit about pheromones. And then the last thing, the last bit of advice which I can give you is on dancing. Now, you probably all realised right at the start what a good dancer I am. <laughs> and that's not because I've been out in clubs all the time. It's because I've spent a lot of time studying science and studying in particular the science of spectroscopy. And spectroscopy is, tells you about how light interacts with molecules. So if we shine a light on the molecule, the molecule will absorb certain frequencies of that light and become excited. And when it absorbs the light and becomes excited, this is what we call the spectroscopic event. Now, I'm using the term light very, very loosely here. What I actually mean is all the different types of radiation that we find in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? All the way from radio waves through to x-rays. All of these carry out different types of spectroscopy, and they all excite different bits of molecules. Now, if you want to learn to dance, the type of spectroscopy that you need to study is infrared spectroscopy. Because infrared spectroscopy is the spectroscopy that makes molecules dance. Okay, so to prove to you how good this is, I'm going to need some volunteers from the audience. If you catch a ball, come down to the front. Okay, did you catch a ball? Whoa! <laughs> oh, I'm going all the way around here. Okay, there you go, girl. It's your chance. Okay? Come on, come on, come down to the front. Catch the ball. Who's going to catch the ball? Yay! Still at the top there. 
Okay, one, two, come on. One, two. Where's the other ball gone? Who wants the ball? Yep. Okay, come on, come down to the front, come down the front. Come down the front. Oh, I've got a blow, fantastic. <laughs> Just my look. <laughs> Obviously the pheromone worked on him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where's that ball gone? Right, who's up there? Girl with the blonde hair, if you come down, give her a big round of applause. <laughs> okay, young, young man with the spectacles. Excellent. Two boys, two girls. Superb. Could you, yeah, could you just stand about there? That would be perfect. Okay, I don't want to, don't want you to cramp my style on stage. So. There you go, just have that little ball there. And could I have the little young lady over here, please? And if you could just go about there. Can your friends see you there? Just put your hand in there. You should find a sort of slit in the ball. Oh no, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh. Right, guys, can one of you go about there and one of you there so everybody can see you? All right, right. And if you just put your hands in the slit, okay, perfect, perfect. Can we just move you a bit sort of further apart from each other? That's perfect, right, okay. So. These young volunteers are going to give us an ex a, 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 a demonstration of how good they are at dancing like molecules. <laughs> so, so the first thing that we've got to do, okay, is we've got to put you into the shape of a molecule. And you're just going to be simple hydrocarbons. So the first thing I want you to do is put your hands up in the air. Okay? Okay, at a slight angle like that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, so we've got our hands up in the air. Now the balls on the hands, those are going to be hydrogen atoms, and then your head is going to be a carbon atom. Okay? Hydrogens, balls, carbon in the middle. All right? And then the last thing that we need to do is look at this. This is a zigzag conformation of a hydrocarbon. Okay? So we need to make that zigzag conformation. So can you put one foot forward, one foot back? Yeah, excellent. Okay, right. You should just be able to see the screen there. What's going to happen is a molecule is going to come up on the screen, all right, and it's going to start dancing, and all you have to do is dance along with the molecule. <laughs> all right? It's quite straightforward. Are you ready? Yeah, you look ready. Okay, right, here goes. Right. <laughs> 